Precious God, we thank you for the hearing of your word. That your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts. Therein, allow it to grow 30, 60, and 100 fold. These things we ask in the name of King Yahshua Jesus. Amen. I read a story about a man who's usually delightful, with good sense of humor. This gentleman happens to be bald. <laughs> One day he and his wife decided to go out to dinner and they hired a babysitter to take care of their little child. And while they were gone, the babysitter got interested in this television program that was on the television. And she had it watched over the children carefully. The little boy, I'll call him Wrath, got his father's electric shaver <laughs> and shaved a big landing strip in the middle of his head. Right straight down the middle of his head. When his father came home, he was furious. He says, Rath, I told you never to play with my electric shaver. Being furious said, go to Rath. Rath caught. He says, well, wait till you see what happened to the little sister. <laughs> the husband and the mother are now horrified run into the room and poor little four-year-old beautiful baby girl shaved like a little rat. <laughs> Skin, bald head. The father now is furious. He says, I'm going to give you the beating of your life. You're going to know that you should never, ever, ever do this again lifts up his hand and is ready to beat Rath, and Rath, with tears in his eyes, looks up and says, Daddy, we were just trying to look like you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rath did not get a beating that night. <laughs> and I can only imagine what the father had to do to convey to rap, that though you desire to look like me, there is a better way for this to have to occur. And this is why I make this announcement today for Father's Day. That we celebrate the male's contribution to the Christian family. And this day, families and joint units are an endangered species. But we need to affirm those men, whether they're biological fathers or not, that there is value of being good fathers. There is value to being good dads. We give honor to these men because their lives should in fact be reflective of the God in whom they say they serve. Their lives should so much exude the presence of God that when we see them, when we talk with them, when we hear from them, we will hear the God that's in them coming out of them. <coughs> there is a high responsibility on them. Those who know me know this. I give them no slack. I don't want to hear it. That's the last one you want to talk to about what a man should in fact be doing. And dangerous when a man does not do what he should do. But that's another story. Today, as we seek to identify with fathers, we need to know the fact that our life and how we live it is reflective of what we say we believe. Considering the fact that when we come to church, we come to church and we worship and we pray, but the God in whom we pray to, the Christ in what we worship, 
is not physically sitting in here with us. So we said, hey man, you can't say Christ is not here. Christ is here. Christ is in our hearts. Okay. Beautiful. But if Christ was sitting right there, would we act and do and talk and be and say all the things we say, be, do, talk, and act if Christ was sitting right there? So there seems to be the fact that though we know Christ is in our heart, though we know God is in heaven, the fact is that because he's not physically sitting there with us, we do not represent that in the fullness of our expressions. For if God was sitting right there with us physically, I guarantee you, we will walk right, we will talk right, we will act right, we will do right, we will say the things we need to be saying as Christian men and women. We will do the things we should be doing as Christian men and women. We will love each other unconditionally. We will have issues of disagreement, but we will be able to walk in harmony because we will walk in harmony because we know God will be looking at how we are doing what we are doing. So, men, I encourage you to step up. I encourage you to tighten your belts up. I encourage you to walk in your faith. Your faith tells you what you should do as men. I challenge you to step into it. Let your children see the very God in you, in your life, in your lived existence. And for those of us who don't have children, we are not immune from this either. Because my life needs to be reflective of the Christ in whom I say that I serve. A young father tried to hush his, his, his antsy little girl one day who was stumping around the church sanctuary on a weekday afternoon. Please be quiet, he tells her. You're in God's house. Well, little Susie pushes open the sanctuary door, peeks her head in, he said, don't worry, Daddy. God ain't home today. <laughs> now, many people would say, Susie should have got. <clears throat> I say, no. Susie should be talked to as Rath should have been talked to. Susie should know because the father shouldn't have been able to live a life before Susie that she will know the fact that God is not there, but God is in our hearts. But when we live and express ourselves, then we know that God is with us, even when God is not physically with us. The Bible tells us in Matthew 18 and 20, for where there are two or three gathered in my name, I am there amongst them. So God is with us, even now. God is here. The implications of this is huge. Because if God is with us, then our lives should reflect that God is with us. We should not have any concerns about living our lives as Christian men and women. Lee Salk, a well-known psychiatrist in his day, wrote a book titled, My Father, My Son. In that book, he interviewed rings and rings and rings and rings of men. And the glaring point that came out the most was that these men said, I wish my dad would have expressed more of how he loves me. How I would have felt the embrace of my dad, a loving, tender father, does not decrease from your masculinity to show love, men. Does not make you lesser because you are expressing love and gentleness. It doesn't diminish you as a person. <coughs> what it does, it strengthens you as a person. It strengthens you because you can balance your responsibilities with a heart full of love. Because God is love. The reflection of what the child sees in you is, should be the reflection of what they see as you are expressing the love that God has put in you. God is love. How dare we, and this is all of us, not just me, how dare we live our lives that it does not reflect the love that God has in us. It should compel us. Lee Salk says that during the interview, not one of the men 
said that they wish their father had not demonstrated love to them. An old man was in town one day. His childhood friend died, 90 something years of age, but the man had a son. He goes back to the neighborhood and he walks up to the place where the son is still living in the old house. The old man knocks on the door, and the man's son comes to the door, and he says, hi, son. I used to know your father. And I'm looking at you, and I wanted to see if I can see any of your father in you. This is the message that I leave for you men today. When your children look at you, what do they see? Do they see the God that should be in you because God is love? Do you see the fact that if God is love, then we should express love as well? So when our children want to see the attributes of God, they should see you living the life as men of God. And if, as you live the life as men of God, you will be expressing the love of God. Grace and peace, y'all.